the tissue culture program. In 1976, we had problems with our creeping flax, that is with the emerald pink. That emerald pink would have some dead vegetation on it and it just didn't look good when we shipped it to the customer. So we got in touch with Michigan State. I should qualify that, but throughout the Throughout our career, we asked Michigan State for a lot of advice, and they happily give us advice, you know. And at that time, they says, come over for a conference for a couple of days, and we'll, we'll explain something to you. And they showed me and someone that was with me the concept of tissue culture. We didn't know a thing what tissue culture was all about, you know, uh, the t meristem culture, tissue culture. What they was driving at is why don't you try to clean up the creeping flax by the tissue culture method. Um, okay, that was the start of our tissue culture program. That was not a popular program. Most of our co-workers here <laughs> are spending money on that. We don't even know what that's all about and forget it. You know, that uh, I, I was literally the one man I mean, I was convinced by Michigan State that we should experiment with that, but most of the co-workers didn't like that program there. And uh, there, there was there, there was some embarrassing situations. The people that worked in the tissue culture lab, they felt they weren't <laughs> they weren't, weren't needed. <laughs> and uh, it, it amazes me that your dad and others continued to. <laughs> Yeah, just hold on to it yet anyway and uh, keep it going. Uh, overall, I think it was a very useful tool for for Walter's Gardens. Mm -hmm. Well, in all honesty, we've made some uh, pretty substantial improvements to our lab over the last few years. Um, you know, we've, we've increased the size. We, we're doing more production in our lab. Uh, in, all, in all honesty, it's cheaper for us to do production um, overseas. And we have to be mindful of that if we're going to stay competitive in a very competitive market. But our, our lab definitely uh, plays a niche, not only in R&D, but also in production. You know, they, they do all our hibiscus for us. They, they, do, um, they do all our grasses for us. Uh, and we also do a lot of um, initiation work in which we send material out to other labs to do production work. It's, it's a very important part of our operation. And we realized earlier, early on that even though we had a, a tissue culture lab, which was, which, which was and still is uh, important to Walters Gardens, it's very important that we knew we couldn't do all our production here uh, at Walters Gardens within the United States. And it was back in 2008 that uh, Jeff had the opportunity to travel to China and Jeff went out to check on uh, tissue culture labs. And he looked at maybe two labs or possibly three uh, and he found a lab that he liked, and actually we ended up going with this, the, the, the other lab, uh, which, is, which was Agastar, and Agastar has turned out to be a very important partner for us in terms of coming up with stage three tissue culture material. Today, tissue culture is an industry standard, but in 1976, it was an emerging science. Few in the industry saw the benefits of tissue culture, and even fewer were implementing it. Having one of the first labs in the industry allowed Walters Gardens to not only produce disease-free plants, but to do so on a large scale and quicker than their competitors. It was through bold moves and investments like the Tissue Culture Lab that Walters Gardens was established as a national leader in perennials.